leper. And when the cripples saw him, oh, they started walking. Everywhere he went, he went. My Lord, sing it one more time. Everywhere he went, everywhere he was doing good. What a mighty God we serve. And what a mighty God. Fill this room with your worship. I can feel your presence, Jesus. We say, angels bow before, bow before him. Bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What am I? Allow me to introduce one tree song. Yenananum. 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 Sum. Abosum. I'll explain it. Nayense. Can I get a witness in the house? Nayansi, 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 never so. Yenananu means our ancestors. Yeah, play along. Wosumabosum means our ancestors worship idols and little gods. Nayansi, that means, but as for we, can I get a witness in the house? Yabosum Yehovah. We will worship Jehovah. Can we sing it one more time? We'll come back to the English. So Yehovah. Very softly, congregation, lift your hands. Oh, Yenananum. 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 Bosom, abosom, 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 and jing jing, na ya ne, na ya dio, na ya ya ne, na ya ne, na bosom. Let's sing one more time.
worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in the belief verse. It suits his sorrows. It suits still and drives away his fears. Let's sing it again to Jesus. How sweet the name of Jesus in the living wounded spirit whole. It makes the wound and counts the troubled breast. Am I the only one who loves Jesus? Tis manna to the hungry soul. And to the weary it's rest. again that how sweet the name of Jesus we could worship you forever in the Sing that name, Jesus. Jesus. Holy and anointed one. Holy and anointed one. Jesus. Jesus. Sing it again to the Lord. Sing Jesus. Jesus. Sing Jesus. Jesus. Holy and anointed one. Spirit like water. Water to my. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. To my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love I know you know this one, so let's sing this one together. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longed after you. You alone are my heart's desire. You alone are my heart desire. One more time as the deer panted for the water. As the deer
Lord, we worship you. Close your eyes and worship him. Close your eyes and worship him. Close your eyes and worship him. We worship you. We worship you. We worship. Sing a new song to unto the Lord. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Paul said, I will sing with my understanding. And I will sing in the spirit. We worship you, Jesus. 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 We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Tonight, Lord, we commend ourselves to you. Father, we hope and our prayer, oh God, is that our worship, oh Lord, has filled this room tonight. God, we ask that your presence, oh Lord, will touch each and every one of us here. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Please move around and say hello to somebody. Welcome somebody to church tonight. I mean it. I see people when we say go around. Chico, move from your chair. You are not a big man. Move from where you are. Move to somebody. And tell somebody that we are together again. Just praising the Lord and something good. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store are together again very softly and slowly just praising the Lord we are together again just praising the Lord come on we are together again we want to Hallelujah, put your hands together. Oh, somebody praise the Lord as you put your hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. You're welcome to tonight's service. Amen. And I trust that we're going to have a great time in God's presence. Amen. Just a few announcements. Um, Remember that all our services have resumed. Turning point service on Thursday morning from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Hallelujah. Come and experience the presence of God. Let's move higher into God's presence. Amen. And, um, well, open heavens service will resume after the fast, um, the 21 days fast. So we'll not be having open heaven service this Friday. But on Saturday morning, there's also prayer clinic. And then also Sunday, save night also resumes. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Well, we want to remind you of our 21 days prayer and fasting that is coming up. Are you excited about that? Hallelujah. 
Now, the book for the fast, um, for the 21 day fast, is He That Had. He That Had, written by our own daddy, the presiding bishop. Hallelujah. It's part of the success series books. Amen. So, this is a book that you must get. And um, God has been good to us. The books have been discounted from 30 Ghana cities to 18 Ghana cities. Oh. I thought you were going to put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what is happening is that the books are here now, tonight. Ashes, are you there? Do you have the books? Okay. Right. So if you need a copy, get it now because very soon the prices will go up again. So get it now. I see some hands there. Get a book and start reading even before we start the fast. So that you have stolen a start, isn't it? Hallelujah. So wave your hand. Listen, there are some people here. Can some of you move this way? And let's have more people help sell the books. Let's do this quickly. And then we'll be moving on. Okay. Uh, my brother, go this way to my right-hand side. There are some people there. And then more hands here. Can we have some more people help? Ashes, let's do this quickly, please. We don't have too much time. 18 Ghana cities. Uh, when you go to the bookshop, it's 30 Ghana cities. So I want to encourage you. Get it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so get a copy and start reading so that when we start the fast, you're already into the book. How many think it's a good idea? You are into the book. Amen. So when we start talking, so, oh, this one is page five or page seven. Amen. Because you've already read the book and um, you have received some revelations already. Amen. Just keep waving. They'll come to you. All right, just keep waving. I see some hands at the back there. Okay, Ashes, we need more hands. Just go to the back. Yeah, there's some people there. All right. Okay, so get a book. And if you haven't gotten yours yet, please try and get it before the fast. The fast is just next, week's, next week, Monday. We are starting on Monday. So from now to Monday, get a copy of the book and let's all read together. Amen. Oh, I said amen. All right, so uh, that's it. Uh, Basel meetings have also resumed, so make sure that you are a part of a Basel every um, Saturday evening between 4 and 8 p.m. when we have the meetings. Just also to announce that the prayer times for the fasting will be uh, on Sunday. From Sunday to Friday, we'll be meeting 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., to pray right here in the Jesus Cathedral. Amen. So from Sunday, so Sunday evenings, 5 to 8, we'll meet. Monday to Friday, 5 to 8, we'll meet. And then on Saturday, Saturday morning from 6 to 9, we'll also meet and pray. Hallelujah. Is it a good idea? Okay. Because it's very important. That's why we say 21 days prayer and fasting. Because sometimes the emphasis is too much on the fasting. You're abstaining from food and you're not praying. Then it becomes a hunger strike. So we don't want that. We really want to pray. Amen. So make sure that you are part of the prayer times. And then we are also reminding you that all our services are streaming live on the internet. You can log on to www.healingjesus.tv and uh, you can watch us live. I'm sure some people are watching us now uh, who couldn't make it to church tonight. And then Marriage Counseling School also resumes this Sunday. Uh, 20th of January, we are beginning those who want to marry in the second half of this year from July to December. This is the school for you. So please go to the front office and register. Registration ends next week Sunday. That's 27th of January. So uh, if you intend to marry in the second half of the year, please hurry and go and register. We also want to inform all the branch pastors to uh, inform your members. Uh, please do this for us so that we don't have uh, people coming in late to register. All right. Thank you. We want to take out a good offering tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I can't feel the excitement at all. All right. Thank you very much for your clap offering. Now I need your money offering. Hallelujah. Take out some money for the Lord. Let's give a good offering to the Lord tonight. 
to say thank you for a beautiful day the Lord has given to us and for his word that we are about to receive tonight 20 Ghana cities 50 Ghana cities 100 Ghana cities you can give to the Lord hallelujah okay please lift up your offering and let's pray all right let's pray father we bless you so much tonight we thank you for this opportunity to give to sow a seed into the work of the kingdom father we pray tonight as we give we ask for your presence in this place may you be glorified in our midst and let this offering go a long way to support the work of the kingdom we thank you father in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah let's welcome sister ida to give us a song please put your hands together for her don't you be in such a hurry because it only leads to worry there's a time to work and there's a time to pray try to find a quiet place to hear his voice and seek his face can you hear the spirit calling come away come away come away come and spend some time with me come away Let your heart and mind be still. Let your empty cup be filled. Come and spend some time with me. Come away. Are you sinking in your sorrow? And are you worried about tomorrow? at the pressures of this life so hard to bear if you try to seek his face hear his voice today you will hear the spirit calling come away come away
come and spend some time with me. Come away. Come and spend some time with me. Come away. Like a shepherd, lead us, watch beneath thy tender care, and in thy pleasant pasture feed us, for thy use, thy flock prepare. Choice to listen for your voice. 
draws us to Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thanks for this time in your presence. In Jesus' name, guide us by the Holy Spirit, we pray. And let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This evening, I am continuing on the series I have been sharing about. And that series is on Humble Yourself. So I want us to look at my topic this evening is Do It Yourself, DIY. DIY, Do It Yourself. James 4, verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Amen. And he shall lift you up. Everybody say, do it yourself. All the verses about humility encourage you to do it yourself. Tell somebody, you've got to do it yourself. What does James chapter 4 say? Humble yourself. Amen. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Because God gives grace unto the humble. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye humble, ye younger, humble, uh, submit yourself unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And verse 6 says, humble yourself Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you. Everybody say, do it yourself. yourself. Right? So this scripture, I'm just a short lesson this evening, um, is teaching about doing things yourself. Amen. 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 Now, why was the Bible saying you should do it yourself? Because... Uh, perhaps if you don't live abroad in, in, let's say, England or America, you would not know that there are big shops that are based on the concept of doing things yourself. So there's the big shops called DIY. Just get down to the job and do it yourself. So you can build your own house yourself, become a plumber yourself, be a carpenter yourself. You don't need a, to hire a carpenter from anywhere. Just do it yourself. All right? So when you live in England or any of those countries, you cannot easily be hiring a carpenter. The carpenters are very expensive people to hire. You can hire a carpenter. You know, the carpenter equally lives in a nice house like your house. And um, he equally has a car like you have, and so on and so forth. So a carpenter is not as poor as you may think. Even Ghanaian carpenters are now rising up to the middle class. And so because of this, the whole concept of doing things yourself has come about. Now, why is do-it-yourself do important? Do-it-yourself is important because when you don't do it yourself, the cost is very high, it's very expensive, Okay? And so you need to do things yourself. You need to learn how to be a plumber. You, if, the, if the toilet is not working, you can change the inside of the toilet yourself. You can connect things. You can repair doors. You can paint the house. You can put wallpaper. You can repair the bed. We have screws, drills, screwdrivers, everything. There's no, you don't, you don't, rarely, you know, when you see a plumber or a Carpenter coming to your house, it means problems are coming. Real bills are coming your way. Isn't it true? For those of you who have lived abroad before, you will understand what I'm saying. Now, the same thing applies to humility. Because you see that all through the Bible, 
God is encouraging you to do it yourself, which is humble yourself. Now, the alternative to humble yourself is very expensive. If you turn with me, I will show you that when you do not humble yourself, there are other agents, just like if you cannot repair your own toilet, there are agents who repair and they will come at great cost. Now, when you do not humble yourself, there are agents which can do it for you. So it's free. You just choose it. If you want to humble yourself, there are things, people that do this work. It's their job. In the Bible, the Bible describes various agents of humility. Amen. Are you listening to me? There are various agents who can bring about this humility which we have been preaching about. That is why the Bible is emphasizing humble yourself. Just do it yourself. Wow. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter number 12. Now, in verse 1, he says, It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. Amen. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ 14 years ago, he was caught up to the third heavens. I knew such a man, how he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now, he was speaking about himself. We all know that. He was speaking about, but he was, you know, because he was like using a form of language where he was trying to like, you know, I know somebody... You know, sometimes we tell a story, there was a certain man. Sometimes the certain man is just around. You get it. So, he says, of such a one I will glory. Yet of myself will I not glory, but in my infirmities. Though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. I will say the truth, lest any man should think of me above that which he seemeth me to be or that which he heareth of me now notice verse 7 very important lest I should be exalted hmm? in case I become big through the abundance of revelation there was given to me the carpenter I told you not to employ. The plumber I told you to find your own DIY and do it yourself. You didn't listen to what I was saying. So there are carpenters and plumbers and electricians available. So since you wouldn't employ yourself and humble yourself, there was given to me a permanent carpenter, which is a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Amen. Lest I should be exalted, I should become high and big. I'm explaining to you tonight that there are agents of humility. And Apostle Paul had one of these agents permanently assigned to him in addition to the revelations that he had. Because many of the spiritual blessings and blessings of the Lord bring about pride. 
So most people who are truly blessed by the Lord are blessed abundantly with whether it is riches, I mean, if the blessing is from the Lord, whether it is riches, honor, anointing, revelation, but it comes with a carpenter. Amen. Are you there? Or you're going home? Turn with me to, we'll come back here. Turn with me to Mark chapter 10. Amen. Are you there? Verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel's sake. He shall receive a hundredfold. A hundredfold of what? Houses. That's a hundred houses. Recently I heard somebody died. He, had, he has a hundred houses. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether he's fulfilling this scripture. But he's got, got a hundred houses. Now in this life, and hundred brethren, hundred sisters, hundred mothers, hundred children, hundred lands. Can you imagine if you own a hundred plots of land? That's 25 acres. With persecutions. With a carpenter. With a carpenter. Permanently assigned to help you to be cool whilst on earth. Because you can easily... It's so easy to forget yourself. Isn't it? Yeah. Back to where we were before. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted. Or in other words, lest I should become too big. Amen. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, I prayed about it three times that it should depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, I will not answer this prayer. My strength is made perfect in weakness. All right? So in other words, God is saying that although I've made you strong, Okay, your strength is going to be perfect when I add a bit of weakness to you. I know you are strong, but your strength is going to be wild, perfect when I add a small weakness to it. And you see that, Charlie, is perfected strength. Amen. Now, When Paul realized that God was not going to answer his prayers, he changed his mind and stopped praying for that thing to go away, which is a very important thing. You see, there are people, maybe God has not decided to give you a child, and you spend your whole life crying about the child. So all the time you look like a patient, and you look like somebody who is not well. But there is no need for that. You must be able to know when God is not answering certain prayers. Because Paul prayed three times. God didn't change his mind. Anything you pray for three times and there is no change. That's it. Remember, Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane three times. He said, Father, 
All things are possible with thee. Let this cup be taken away from me. I'm asking in the name of no answer. And no trace. God has decided to add some small weakness to your strength. Now, when you recognize this great blessing of the Lord, that God is blessing you through some amount of weakness in your life, you must now begin to recognize other problems as coming from the Lord as well. That's exactly what Paul did. That is why the Bible says, do it yourself. Most gladly, after that, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Because when you start rejoicing in what God has not done for you and what God has not given to you and what God has not answered, you become even stronger spiritually. Yeah. But if you moan and groan and moan and groan all the time, you get weaker because you even criticize God and you can get very angry with God for not answering your prayer. But if you follow the example of Paul, ah, a great spiritual blessing comes on your life. And he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Now, this carpenter that is standing with him, he looks at him and is not so angry with him. In infirmities. These are all things that bring humility. If you especially, if you can't do it yourself. Sometimes God blesses you so much that it's impossible to be humble. It's impossible. Charlie, you need something small to, small injection. I mean, we all have immunization. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Is there anybody here who has not had BCG and polio vaccine? Everybody here, once you are born in Africa, you have to have polio vaccine, BCG vaccine, and all the other uh, tetanus, and uh, what are the other uh, vaccinations? Uh, uh, measles. You know? Something small. What do you think? Reproaches. Hey. Necessities. What you need, that is poverty. Persecutions. Distresses. But when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Wow. So these, either de- do it yourself, or these ones can do it for you. This is the whole message. I finished preaching. Amen. Do these things make you humble? Weakness. Does it make you humble? When you are not feeling well, and not feeling strong, you see how you start praying. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. In infirmities, in fact, a sick bay or a hospital is sometimes called an infirmary. Infirmities for in an infirmary for infirmities. Amen. Sickness is one of the top most carpenters you can find in the world. One day, Desmond Tutu was struck with a cancer. And he said, he, he made some comment, I, I may be wrong, but I think I'm right, that he thinks most people should be struck with a terminal disease and that it will humble them greatly when he was sick. One day I met a man and I asked him whether he was going to pay his tithes. And he said to me, Do you know how much I earn? 
I cannot pay tithes. I earn dollars. But when he got sick, he had a pot belly before he was sick. And after he was sick, all the pot belly went. He came to me later and showed me his trousers. He said, look at it. And he, he showed it his face. He said, it's gone. And when he came to show me his trousers, he was showing me, okay, the trousers on the day that he started to pay tithes. But he never would pay tithes before. Till he got sick. When the doctors told him, you are going to die, he started to pray. Many of us become humble when we are sick. So that is why the older Christians rarely believed that sickness was a message from God and could not pray for healing. It is modern Christians who pray for healing. And in fact, we have no space to accept that a sickness may be sent from God or allowed. But there are many sicknesses that are allowed by the Lord. It humbles you. I remember a certain country which had a leader. And the leader was not well. And you see a certain humble demeanor on the leader of that country throughout the time that he was the leader. And this country experienced a kind of humility in the leadership. <laughs> the country's name begins with L. Are you there? The, do, you, do you understand the message I'm preaching? All right. Then, necessities. Where people are in need, they are always humble. So much so that one day someone said, when an evangelist comes to Africa and says, how many want to give your life to Jesus? Everybody lift his hand. What they are actually saying is that I'm hungry. <laughs> That's what somebody said. I need help. I heard somebody making that joke one day. But look, I look at how you've come to church Tuesday. Do you think if you were in Germany, you were a rich man in Germany, you would be here? You don't go to church at all. The rich Europeans do not go to church. Switzerland, if you check on the internet, has the number of millionaires that they have in their country and the number of millionaires that are created every month and every year number of millionaires. When you go to Switzerland, almost all the churches are empty. The churches have been turned into museums. I visited a church once which would seat about a thousand people, 1,500 people. It was being used once every two weeks. And only some eight old men and late, very old ladies and old men were coming there. They have need of nothing. And that causes arrogance. I walked into the shop of someone who was selling watches in Geneva. And I asked her, do you believe in God? She looked at me as though I was sick. And she said, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I met a man one day at a town called, a, a town on the, in the, a port town of England. 
and I asked the man, do you believe in God? He said, no, I don't believe in God at all. And he asked me, do you believe? I said, I believe in God. And he said, there is a reason why I believe in God. I said, why? He said, because you are from Africa. I said, I said what, do you, what do you mean by because I'm from Africa? He said, in, you see, he said, to, he said to me, here, we have answers to all the problems that we have. But where you come from, there are no solutions to most of the problems. And so that is why you pray. That's why you pray. That's why you go to church. Because you have no solutions. You have no answer. But here, if it's health, we have, we can transplant kidney. We can do this. We can change everything. But you have no answer. Not somebody told me. I said, what he was telling me. This is the speakings of men who have all their needs met. And so sometimes, God touches you with necessities to cool you down. Amen. Two types of politicians. Those in need of power and those who have power. Yeah. Those who have the power often are full of arrogance and are puffed up. Whether they are from NPP or NDC, NPP and NDC are similar, similar in the outcome. They are the same in that sense. Different groups of people, one is mostly Ashantis and Akans, if you want a difference, and one is mostly a West Northness and other regions. That's a difference. But in the outcome of the effect on the people of Ghana, it's the same. That's why I can't join NPP and I can't join NDC. I have joined Ghana. As they say, Ghana is the winner. But you have two types. Depending on who is in power, you see humility. As I'm saying that necessity makes you cool down. Do you remember when Professor Mills was not in power? He used to go around humbly. So when they were campaigning for him, he said, oh, you're humble. It was one of the main. My wife met him at Dansoman when he was campaigning. Before he became the president, my wife met him at Dansoman. He was going from house to house. When he saw, he said, ah, my student, because he's, he's one of the most intelligent Ghanaians we have, have ever been in Ghana. He's very, very, very clever. He's one of the lecturers who will lecture without notes. And you see, when he became a president, he speaks yeah. off the cuff. He couldn't see well, and he could just speak. Very clever. Very clever. Highly intelligent. She met him going from door to door at Tansoma. And humility. Because he was in need of what? Power. When you have necessity, it humbles you. Whether it's in need of money or in need of power, you become cool. NPP, in need of power, look more humble than they have ever looked since we knew them. Yeah. More humble than we have ever seen them before. Yeah. I think they also started door to door. Person to person evangelism. Hmm? Market to market. Taxi rank to taxi rank. And soul to soul. Yeah. Since when will you see MPP quoting scriptures? Eh? 
I'm asking you a simple English question. Scriptures and having church services. People that are not associated with church. Because we, we, are, we are charismatic Christians. We know those who are associated with churches. Before the politics begin, we can see those who are associated with churches. It's not the political visiting of churches. You see, before the politics start, I know you. When God raises you up, I will know whether you are originally here or not. Yeah. Yeah, necessity. I've made them have church services. Pray God. Huh? The battle is the Lord's. <laughs> it's wonderful. But you see, necessity, it changes you so much. It's a carpenter. Either you do it yourself, or the carpenter will come. And then before you realize, you have become cool. It's wild, though. Is it wild? It's very wild. Remember when Dr. Otabel came out with his famous Machiavellian speech? You should have heard some people rebuking him. People who don't fear God. They took him on and they dressed him down because they have the mouthpiece. And he never, he never spoke again. He couldn't reply. They insulted him, rebuked him, dressed him down. Just like some people have been doing to me. You see, they're puffed up. Big. Strong. Wait. You wait. <laughs> wait and see. Every power has an expiry date. Every power has an expiry date. Yeah. Where you take up pastors and denigrate and insult them. Because Dr. Otterbo didn't say anything. He, did, he didn't even call anybody evil. He said that to take my words and to play it on a radio or to play it on a campaign as if he is campaigning against free SHS. Is evil and Machiavellian. And why don't you go and find out what it means? That's what is not that the not that NDC is evil or that somebody in NDC is evil, but such an activity to take something out of context and make it sound like and use it as a campaign. Yeah. But you see, people, I was watching each and everyone was looking at them and said, wow, this man doesn't fear God. This man doesn't fear God. This man, the Bible says that those that don't fear God, the wicked, and those that don't fear God shall be cast into hell. But you see, when you have no needs, you become big, strong words. Hey! Threatening people. Threatening people. It's like you must join our party. We will never join your party. What do you mean? Rubbish. We will never join you. And we will never be blind loyalists to anybody. Never. We will never join you. And we will never be blind loyalists. We will come and defend things that cannot be defended. What do you mean? Keep on speaking. With your strength and your arrogance. But remember, the Bible says, humble, do it yourself. If you don't do it yourself, something will do it for you. Yeah. One day, I met a man. He was doing business. His business was big. I even gave him a contract, but he didn't know I was the one who gave him the contract. It was through somebody. And I said, employ that, give that guy the contract. So the guy did a contract, big. One day I met him somewhere. And I said to him, hey, 
How are you, sir? So, oh, yeah. And I said, you, you need, you must be born again. And he started shouting at me. Shouting. Who do you think you are? And it was in a public place. Who do you think you are? You think you are better than me? You just see me, then you say, I should be born. Do you know whether I go to church or not? How do you get up and just start talking like that? He started shouting, I said, please. Relax. There's no need to quarrel. He said, I'm a gun man. I don't quarrel. I beat. I beat. And when he said I beat, I was immediately afraid. I said, please don't beat me. <laughs> so I kept quiet. I kept quiet. And I just backed away. Four months later, it was January, January, January 1st, 2nd, and I happened to meet the same person again at the same place. When I saw him, I wanted to say something spiritual, but I remembered that he had warned me that he would beat me. (laughs) So I didn't say anything. All that I said was, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. A few weeks later, he got sick. This powerful big tree. Not what they say, I'm telling you. He got sick. And he was admitted to the hospital, one of the main hospitals in Accra. I didn't know that he was admitted. Then I had a message from somebody who is a member of this church, who worked in his company. And the person said that, this man who said he, he would beat me is not well, and he is asking for you. I said, me? How can he ask for me? I said, oh, no, he's asking. When I heard, I said, oh, no, he cannot be. He cannot be. He's too big for me. I'm just a pastor. Then I heard another message. The sickness was getting more serious. In fact, he told his child, I don't know whether I will come back home. As the sickness got, I got yet another urgent call. And this time I turned to Bishop Ed. I said, you know, I think maybe I should go to the hospital to see this guy. Before I could even take the decision, I had yet another call that the man has died. When he was dying, he was holding our church member in the bed in the hospital. I don't want to mention the name of the hospital. And he was screaming. He was saying, hey, they are coming. They are coming for me. He could see the spirits. They are coming for me. You see, in your bigness, when you speak proudly, big, so strong and big, powerful, because you have power, be careful. Because every power has a date where it's finished. If you don't know, stay around for some time. He, he died and went to where he was going, screaming in fear and terror. Yeah. I always remember him. Sometimes when I go back to that place where I met him, I remember how he shouted. Shouted at, get out, pastor. Who do you think you pastors? Whatever. Kenneth Hagen, he had, he had a, an auntie who did not believe in God. And she used to insult pastors. She said, oh, these, they are just for money. They, just, they don't have whatever. They just want money. They are, they are useless. They are all lying. There's nothing about it. And he said, some years later, this woman was dying. And he was passing through the town. When he got there, he called and said, look, auntie so-and-so is dying. It is not well. Can you come? When he entered the room, he saw his auntie lying on the bed. And the auntie whose eyes, he said the eyes were like glass eyeballs. They were like glass. As soon as he saw, the, the person explained to him, he said that this is Kenneth. The one who made a preacher in American English. The one who made a preacher. This is Kenneth. Remember Auntie So-and-So's son? The one who became a preacher? This same is here. As soon as she heard that he was there, 
her eyes were like glass. She immediately held him and said, Ha! Ken! 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 Tell me! I'm so frightened! I'm so frightened! Tell me it's not real! Tell me it's not real! She said, I'm holding Ken and Tell me it's not real! I said, I was a preacher. I could not tell her it's not real. It's real. I couldn't say that it's not real. And she was screaming, ah, ah, and said, he had, he had her voice going down into a hole. He said, when somebody is calling you from far, he, had her, he, he died right in front of him. Tell, and she was, she was holding her, said, tell, me, tell me it's not real, tell me it's not real, tell me, so I should tell you it's not real. So I can't tell you it's not real, it's real. Mr. Big Staff, and those who speak arrogantly and proudly, if you don't do it yourself, there are a lot of things, carpenters and uh, plumbers, electricians and painters, they can do it for you. Distresses. Some of us ladies, we are so feel that we are so beautiful. But there is a plumber. He will flash you through down so many toilets. You now, you see that you don't have self-respect for yourself. You see, a toilet paper has been used on you. Wow. You realize that. Your self-respect is finished. Then you see that you come to the church. When we do altar calls, say, those who want to, whatever, you come like this. They see that you nailed that. Not knowing that an electrician has been firing into your bum bum like this. Power! 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 (laughs) 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 Yeah! Persecution, distress, 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 distressing circumstance, distressing issues. You said that you are frustrated. You are distressed. Yeah. That's why when you do a crusade in Africa, people come, people listen, people hear. That's why churches are full. Because there are things that are helping us to be humble. Hey. Do you see rich people in church? I'm asking you a question. Do you see people who have really prospered at a certain level? Do you see them here? They don't come. They don't come. Even many of you, if God were to bless you, as uh, these people have come to power, you get certain one or two posts, you will not come to Tuesday service again. And you read on the internet, Bishop Dark says this. Meanwhile, you are not in the church. If you were in the church, you realize that it is not us you are hearing it at all. Mm? Uh, if you get some small post mm? and you become an ambassador and you become his excellency or your excellency just say we don't call you John again we call you excellency or we don't call you or say we call you honorable wow will you still come to church you know, recently one of our churches in a certain country in Africa, whose name begins with within the first ten letters of the alphabet. <laughs> I heard some news and I was encouraged. You see, the pastors of the church are two young missionaries whom we sent to that country. And I have been to that country before, and I've met the ambassador and all that. But I recently heard that the ambassador, the Ghanaian ambassador, the Ghana ambassador, was going to our church. That's a small church, a small church with these young boys. Young boys as missionaries. You see them young from straight from school, this type of young, zealous very lean. The, the trousers are falling down. It is only through a belt that the trouser can stay on top. Oh my Lord. 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 
But I heard that the ambassador was attending the church. And I was amazed and I was encouraged. And I said, wow, it's a blessing. Ambassador will come and sit down there Sunday after Sunday with these young boys. Encouraging the church. Oh, is it not nice when there's humility? You, say, you are your excellency, you are your honorable, but you are humble to sit down. Oh, what a blessing. Do it yourself. Humble yourself means do it yourself. Stand to your feet. Our time is up. Tell your neighbor, you better do it yourself or it will be done for you. Mercy. Lift your hands up and just thank the Lord for his word and his message to you this evening listen listen everybody you see sometimes when you hear the word of god it sounds funny even as if it applies to something in the air but it applies to me it applies to you so just pray the lord how does this apply to me show me by your holy spirit and let me receive the revelation lift your hand and just pray to the lord for a moment father thank you for your blessing for your word your spirit that is speaking to our hearts we thank you lord We worship you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity, Lord, to hear your word. What a blessing. What an honor. What a blessing. Thank you. Father, thank you so much for the wonderful message you have given us today. Lord, we just come before you, Lord. We say, Lord, have mercy on us, Lord. We are so proud, Lord. We easily become proud. When you bless us a little, we feel so big. We confess we are sorry. We ask that you help us not to feel too good and big and confident so that you would have to send something else to our lives. We thank you for the blessing, the healing that comes into our life through your word. Have mercy on us, we pray, for everyone here. Help us, give us grace. 
give us ability to be humble. We thank you, Father, for healing, for your blessing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. If you are here like that, just lift up your right hand. Pastor, I want to give my, my life to God. I want Jesus to come into my life. I want to be saved today. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Please pray with me. Help me. Help me to know God. If you are here like that, lift up your hand now quickly. God bless you. God bless you. Lift it up high. Thank you. Pastor, help me to know Jesus Christ. I want my sins to be washed away today. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand. If you've lifted your hand, I want you to come to the front. Come to me in the front here. God bless you. Come, come, I want to pray with you right here. Bless you, my friend. I surrender all to Jesus. And all to Thee, my, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Everybody, lift your hand, and my brother, lift your hand as well. Close your eyes and say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Tonight, I open my heart. I receive Jesus as my Savior, my Master, and my Lord. Oh God, please cleanse me from pride, from sin, from wickedness. Today, I humble myself. And I give my life to God. I give my life to Jesus. Thank you, Father. I open my heart. I open my heart. I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you, Father. Please write my name. Please write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What's your name? Samuel. What's your name? Godfrey. Please go with our pastor who is waving his hand over there and he'll come back and join us. Give the Lord a mighty clap of him as we welcome Bishop Edward Nilante Okunka Adi to take us through the offering. What a word. What a word. What a word. Say thank you, Bishop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. And I believe the best response to such a word is to just, you know, go to your room and you yourself D I Y. D means do, I means. Uh, I means what? It. And then Y is what? Yourself. Do it yourself. Tell seven people, do it yourself. Humble yourself. Ask him, or oh, you want some carpenters? Some plumbers? Electricians? Hey! What a word. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I feel so energized. We are so blessed in this church, I tell you. You can't easily get this message anywhere. Balanced, real, down to earth, simple to understand, clear. I mean, practical, applicable. That's me. Wonderful. You want to, let's pray. Father, bless us as we give offerings tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. I believe there are some people that are paying your tithe today. And some people <laughs> who have not been paying tithe, 
spoke like the guy who was in the message and have been speaking like the guy in the message. You don't know how much I earn. That's why you talk about tithe. I earn dollars. I earn 3,000. My tithe is not a small amount. I earn 5,000. Hey! But one day God can show you that he's more powerful. So tonight, the message is also yours. DIY. Do it yourself. Pick up an envelope. If I were you, I'll start from tonight. Is it a good idea? So if you are paying your tithe, please stand up. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you with what you bless us with. Thank you. As we give our tithes, let it be unto us according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Please come all the way and drop your tithe into the basket. Do it yourself. Some of you too, you like to send people. Because you don't want anybody to see you when you are coming. Tonight, everything is do it yourself. Before some carpenters are sent. Hey, necessities. It's so clear. I can see that. Even small, sometimes when you see, you speak in a certain way, then you see that mm, some of that thing is coming on you. Small, nice cabby that you have got. The way you can speak before you realize you are facing someone. Don't care. Why, why are you standing by the car? When your car was just a tico, people could stand around. Now it's a Toyota Corolla. Nobody can stand around it. Even the shadow shouldn't come. Hey! Humble yourself. Amen. Father, tonight bless us as we give offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to do this quickly so we can run out of here. I believe there are some people that can give 20 Ghana cities tonight. 50 Ghana cities. If you are here like that, I want you to stand up. Do it yourself and bring your offering right in front here. And um, just come. 20 Ghana cities, 50 Ghana cities. Just arise and come quickly. Do it yourself, right? As for today, dear, tell yourself I won't send anyone. I myself am bringing my offering to the front. God bless you. Come all the way. God bless you. Oh, Bishop Johnny. Bishop Johnny is coming from far. But he's coming still. God bless you. Oh, clap for all these wonderful people. God bless you. God bless you. Oh. We are coming ourselves. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ten Ghana cities. Come all the way. Ten Ghana. God bless you. Rise up and also come. As for tonight, you are telling yourself, I'm coming myself. God bless you. May you never lose your reward. Be blessed. Be blessed. Oh, another basket. Two baskets can help us here. God bless you. Come all the way. Don't be shy. Do it yourself. Because when the blessing comes, you would like to enjoy it yourself, isn't it? So come all the way. Ten Ghana. God bless you. Oh, God bless all of you. God bless you. You are giving your offering. You are bowing. Hey, humility galore. When you become a wife of an ambassador, may you still come like that and bow in the church. Hey, like Bishop said, it's not easy to be humble. If you are not careful, small no, you see that pride has come. Small baby, you have got in front of your face. You see that you are facing people. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on your children. You have strapped your baby in front of you. You see that if she's moving around and an Asha B is going for her, say, hey, 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 I'm coming. Hey, don't touch. You, Apollo, Apollo will come on her just now. Hey. <laughs> hey. It's very easy to be proud of. Very small. Before you know it, no, you see that pride has come. Some of you just, anyway, Five Ghana, please. Let's come. Five Ghana. Come yourself. Don't send someone. Just come. 
Eh? 20 have come themselves. 50 have come themselves. And only 5 to you want to send someone. Eh? Hey, 5 to do you have to send someone like send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. Every day sending people. As for today, do it yourself. And come all the way. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, clap for them as they come. God bless you. Just to encourage them as they come. God bless you all the way. Five Ghana. Five Ghana. They, they hurry up small. Eh? Five Ghana you are bringing to Atobosa. Go and sit down too quickly. Ah. Okay, okay, okay. God bless you. Now, we've got to a place. You know, give me a few seconds. You people who are at the place there. Look. It's time for combination offerings. Do you understand combination? A combination of denominations. Either two plus two. Two plus one. One plus one is also a combination. Is it a good idea? Because sometimes you are blessed with prosperity, but you see that you don't have peace. So you need a combination of prosperity with peace. Or, or you don't like combination blessing. You want just one way. Or you have prosperity, but you see that you, are, you don't have health. So you have money like Steve Jobs. Do you know Steve Jobs? That iPhone man or iPad man. He had money, but he didn't have health. He didn't have that combination. Tonight, as you give an offering, I'm going to proclaim a combination blessing on you. Is it a good idea? So that when you, get, you prosper, then health too will add itself. Or you get a beloved, then marriage will come. Some people get beloved, that doesn't end in marriage. But you will escape. Okay. Any combination, two plus two, two plus one, one plus one. Please come all the way and drop it in. Combination, receive it. Combination, receive it. It's a good blessing. Receive it. God bless you. Receive it. You have got a car, but you can't buy fuel. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what problem is this you have got a visa but you don't have tickets <laughs> you have got visa you have got tickets but nowhere to stay if you go hey receive let God bless you any combination 1 plus 1 2 plus 1 2 plus 2 one plus one plus one. Okay, one Ghana. Join them. Let's finish this very quickly. We are at the end. One Ghana. Come all the way. Come all the way. One Ghana. Join them. One Ghana. You are also enjoying some of the combination blessing. God bless you. God bless you. What a blessing. One Ghana. Hey, today you are fewer than the 20 people. Hey, God is blessing you. You are receiving a blessing. God bless you. God bless you. All the way. God bless you. God bless you. You have a lot of friends, but you don't have a beloved. When you talk, oh, she's just my friend. Oh, she's just my friend. Oh, he's just my friend. Oh, yapa. Beloved double age. Hey. Be blessed. I see a little girl. Is she coming with offering? She's coming. All right. Please help her. Otherwise, by the time she comes, <laughs> the service is over. <laughs> Good. Wow. All the way from, you see, where she's coming from is very far. Her, her steps are very short. That's why it's taking her so long. God bless you. Receive the blessing. That's all. All the combination blessings. You go to school and then you pass exams. You go to university and you get a job. Receive all in Jesus' name. Boosters, 
Do we still give boosters? It's good to give a booster. Take out some boosters. Some of you, your booster should be a note. Because it's, it's not only coins that you give. Reverend Ato. Eh? Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's true. Take out, maybe you have some, you have plenty five Ghana notes. You have given 20 already. One of them can be a booster. It doesn't always have to be coins or one Ghana. It's like, unless you have come down, you cannot give booster. It's not like that. Some of you, you don't have any note less than 10. So um, that's how you give a booster. 10 Ghana can be a booster for you. Yeah. I see a pastor. He has got 5 Ghana, 10 Ghana. He has given one already. He has taken out 2 Ghana as his booster. All of it is good. Is it a good idea? Lift it up. Father, bless us as we give all these offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Receive all the boosters and all the blessings that go with it. 21st, we are beginning our 21 days fasting. You see, some people are not clapping. I don't know. No, I'm not saying you should clap, but I just said some people are not clapping. Are you trying to exclude yourself already? No. Everybody is in it. Humble yourself and fast. Before a carpenter forces you to fast. Because one day when you meet a certain carpenter, by all means you will fast. When they are bringing their food, they say, no, 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 not this time. One time we had an ISI. One brother, he fainted at the back. And they called some medical people and they said, let's, maybe he's dehydrated, so let's give him some Fanta. And the guy said, no, 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 pure water. Pure water. It's like he's, he's in a fast. He's not about to spoil. <laughs> to spoil. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Pure water. <laughs> and they brought him pure water. <laughs> Do you see? He was fasting. He was doing it himself. You are, you, you are not fasting. You want to come and break his fast. <laughs> With Fanta. Maybe he's... 21 days. He has read 18. <laughs> we want him to stop. <laughs> He's almost at the end of 21 days. We say, like, give him Fanta. <laughs> Somebody said he should have called for malt. <laughs> oh, no, no. No Fanta. Malt. Me area no malt na it me too no. Please stand up on your feet. Let's close. Asha, are you done? Wonderful. So twenty first, we are on, and all the books. Um, he that hath is right there. We are using that. We are praying with the truths that are written in there. And all of us are getting copies. When you are praying, you are looking. You are praying with the message. You are praying with the revelations. By the time we finish, you see that book, at the side, they have written success. I didn't write it to, it was written there. It means the book will spell success for your life. This year, you will succeed. It is our year of faithfulness and loyalty and God will cause us to succeed as we remain faithful. Shake your neighbors and tell him, my brother, as for this message, do it yourself. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Or, or do you want him to send some agents? Carpenters. Huh? Some electricians. To shock you at some places. Hey. Tell him the message is for you tonight. As for this message, get it yourself. 
Tonight is a DIY. It's a do it yourself. I'm getting this message myself. I'm soaking it in again myself. And I know that God will help me to humble myself. Share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship, contribution, and participation of the Holy Ghost be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.